Hey, so this is a short overview video on DIA point of sale and various functions that are available within it. Uh, we have a separate video which talks through the back end of DIA and how the point of sale is set up, things like surcharges and similar. So this will just cover day-to-day uh, -day use for things like sales, exchanges and similar. So we'll start with the basics here and just show a simple product sale. So I've got some quick keys set up already here. That's something again that's done in the back end of DIA. So if I click into a category of product, then I've got a few things I can sell. Uh, click any product and that will just add this to the sale. You can also search for products at the top here. Um, plus, if you have a barcode scanner, you can just read a barcode of a product and that will scan it straight into the side. If we open this here, we can change the quantities uh, or click into the price to override the price based on user settings. And then to complete a sale, simple sale, click pay, um, select the appropriate payment method and complete the sale. There are, of course, other more advanced ways of handling sales. So if we go and grab a product once again, then there's an option down the bottom right-hand side here to add numerous things to this sale. So we can add a sales rep if we're recording things like commission or similar, uh, but also more importantly, we can add a customer. So if we add a customer to this order, then we can see that customer information up here. That will also apply any customer discounts. So you'll see this is now dropped from $35 to $31.50. Um, also, if that customer has things like store credit or similar, you can use that, but I'll show that uh, shortly a little bit later in the video. So now that I've added that customer, I can click here and pay. Um, I can see this customer's balance. Uh, and if we're using loyalty, uh, which I'll mention shortly, then we can see the points there as well. Because we've added a customer, we've now got other options here to put this on lay-by, put it on account or similar. Uh, if we want to take payment through multiple methods, we can do that as well. So for example, here, um, I'll change this to $20 and take that payment on credit card. Um, you'll notice that this gives us a surcharge. Again, that's something that's set up in the back end of DIA. Uh, leaving us 1150, which I can then say, for example, that I want to use the loyalty to pay for that because I've got $35 in loyalty. So we've earned some more loyalty points uh, for this sale and we've paid with part loyalty, part cash. Uh, finally, I'll do uh, just another sale again. So here, this is a grouped product or a product with variants. So I want to sell a beer cooler and I'll sell it in uh, medium blue. Um, here, I'll add a customer once again. Uh, again, there's a discount here that applies. Um, and this time what I'll do is I'll uh, park this sale. So uh, customer will return tomorrow, for example. And I'll park this sale, which will clear it from the uh, dashboard here um, and can be uh, retrieved later on. So if we head to the side menu here, there's a couple of areas under the sell option. Uh, so there are parked sales. If I go back into here, I can see any sales that I've parked, including this example here that we've just done. So if I click back into this sale, that will essentially recover it back to the main screen. And then I can search for more products, add more things if I want to. And I can continue the sale in the normal way. So again, I can pay this, uh, I can put this to cash. You'll also see here we've got quick cash denominations. That's another thing that's set up in the back end of, of deal when you set up the polls. So here, full tender, this gives us the change amount and also the loyalty once again. So that's most of the things to do with the general day-to-day -day of sales. There's a couple of other uh, things to be aware of in fulfillment area, um, and then we'll talk about stock and stock movements. So also under the sell option here, um, we've got an option for sales history. So parked sales contains those that have been, as, as it implies, parked. 
sales history contains all of the sales that have gone through the pos. So then if you want to do things like refunds or exchanges or partial refunds or similar, uh, you can perform those here. So for example, if I go back into uh, this sale to Bayside Club that I did yesterday, um, I can click into here and I can get a copy of a receipt if I wanted to, I can confirm that it's the right sale. Um, and if I want to return this, um, then I can select here to do this, um, select one or multiple of the products, um, and then I've got an option of refund or exchange. So if we click refund, this will take us straight to the tender page, just like we were performing a sale, and we can say that we're going to refund it to cash or credit or similar. Otherwise, if I choose exchange, then that will put us back on the sale dashboard um, with a negative product here uh, and with a refund by default. And if I wanted to then, uh, for example, go in and grab another product, so there's a $9 refund, a $10 product, uh, and that leaves us a $1 owed for the exchange. So I can then apply that in the usual manner, complete that off, and that's one product returned and the refund completed, another product sold out uh, and the exchange amount taken. The other part of the sell screen that's very useful and this links into the main module of Deer Inventory uh, is the click and collect option here. So this gives the ability for uh, in-store fulfillment of inventory orders. So in other words, click and collect will show you any orders which have been placed through Deer Inventory and are not yet fulfilled. So if a customer comes in store and says, um, I found the team and ordered two of these widgets and want to collect them from store, um, then you can do that. Obviously, if you operate a warehouse separate from your retail stores, you would need to work out shipping that product into the store for the customer to pick up, or you'd need to check the store has stock, obviously. So I can search for a customer here or an order number. Um, otherwise, if I just leave the searches blank, then I can find every order. So uh, this will show you if orders are fulfilled, paid, and there's color variants based on this. So uh, a gray order is already fulfilled. A blue order is uh, fulfilled but not paid. Um, and if we continue down, there's probably an example here. There's also uh, partially fulfilled or ready for fulfillment. So normally ready for fulfillment is what you're looking for. That essentially means that if there is an order from the customer. They have had an invoice and paid, but they haven't had the product yet. So if a customer comes in the store and says, I have this invoice, I've paid it, here we go. Um, I can click that order. Uh, ready for fulfillment, um, that confirms the goods that we need. So great, you've ordered five payload. Um, we'll fulfill that now. Click done. Uh, we have a stock take running, so you wouldn't normally see that, that's fine. Um, and from that done page, you will then go through to the sell screen, take the cash or credit and similar. So that provides a really handy option for those clients who have say a warehouse and a retail storefront or similar um, for kind of multi-channel operations for a client. The other area uh, that multi-channel can work uh, in relation to is gift cards. So if we go down here to the report section, there is a gift card summary um, and we can see any gift cards here. So there's a gift card of uh, $50 here. Um, there's two that have been fully used, um, but there's a gift card code here. Um, if we want to sell a gift card out, we can just go back to the register in the normal way. And uh, if you've turned on gift cards within the back end of Deer, uh, there'll be a product here of a gift card. It's up to you how you handle the codes. And there are companies you can buy branded gift cards from with barcodes on them. Um, you can choose expiry, and obviously you can choose whether the customer is buying $50, $100, and so on. Hopefully that makes sense for gift cards. In terms of um, using a gift card to pay for a purchase, um, it works in much the same way as a normal sale does. So uh, if a customer is ordering a payout, and we click pay, if they're going to pay on gift card, we click here, 
and we then put the code in. Um, and if I type this code intentionally wrong, then you'll see we get an error. So if the client's trying to use a gift card that isn't registered, that will prompt you. Um, if we pop the correct code in, I think that's right. Try that once more. Thank you. Then it will complete through and that will leave the balance, in this case, $36 uh, on the uh, gift card for the customer. That's the majority of the day-to-day uh, -day, um, and fulfillment side of the POS. A uh, couple of last pieces to point out here. Um, there is also a cash management option within uh, the cell area here. So for either petty cash or store cash, uh, you can keep a cash balance in the POS here. So if you've got an opening float, if you need to take money out for cash purchases or similar, uh, you can handle that. And that will also affect how you cash up at the end of the day. Uh, the last main area to talk about then is in the inventory section here, uh, a couple of options for transfers and ordering. So everything we've shown so far relies on having products in the store. So someone comes in, purchases a product, you've got it on the shop floor, you sell it to them. There's a couple of other options here. So you can perform a stock transfer if you want to move things between areas in your store. So I can move things from a particular bin or an area in the store to another one and just add products as I go. Probably the more useful one for most clients is the ordering section. Uh, this will allow you to order products from another warehouse or from the central warehouse or from a supplier. So here I can choose to order from another warehouse. So uh, I'm in the Melbourne store, I'm gonna order from Hobart Warehouse. Um, I can either just add products uh, or I can choose to reorder based on the minimum levels that we've set up in the inventory in the back end. So here I can choose whether I want to order only what Hobart has in stock for me or everything. So to show the difference here, um, if I choose everything that's low on stock, you'll see there's nothing available to come over from Hobart Warehouse. Um, if I said that I wanted to take it from one of our consignment warehouses, I can try the same and I can see the same information if they had anything for me as well. Um, if you want to just do a manual order, you can do that no problem at all. So I can add a product here and there are various options based on whether you have barcode scanners or similar. Um, in this case, however, I'll just search for a product. So I can see here, we've got 1,115 on order. There's actually none available at the Hobart warehouse, uh, but that's okay, let's pop it through for the moment. And here there's 11 available at the Hobart warehouse. So I can see here uh, the information. So maybe I don't want to reorder this one, um, but I will order, uh, what are they available? Let's have a look, two of those available. A save um, and that will create a stock transfer order which can be printed out which will notify that warehouse. Uh, you can also do a supplier order, works in much the same way but we're picking from our supplier list rather than a warehouse list uh, and then we add products in exactly the same way and we can choose whether that's a draft or an authorized purchase order. Generally the warehouse or, or back of house admin would then pick that up, send it to the supplier and similar. So hopefully that makes sense for an overview of most of the main areas of the point of sale from Deer. Uh, there are a couple of other areas here where you can see, for example, all customer information. Um, and there's also a few setup areas for things like hardware as well. Uh, there are some reports here, which are quite useful uh, in relation to credits, product performance, and things like that. Um, for more advanced reporting, uh, Deer's backend has reporting on pretty much every single area of the system. And the idea of these reports is they're useful to the day-to-day -day staff involved in the retail side of the store. Uh, we have other more involved videos talking through a little bit more of the specifics of the system. So a uh, short video on exchanges, short video on gift cards and similar. Um, if there's any other more involved questions, uh, we'll always welcome comments at any point. Hopefully that makes sense as a dear one-on overview and thanks for watching.